What's good, people? It's Joshua from Joshua Chubb Photography back again with another video. And in today's video, I figure I would walk you guys through what my uh, photography kit is going to be for 2023. Um, this wasn't really a video that I was expecting to make because on December 31st of last year, um, the setup that I had, I was pretty confident it was what I was going to keep for 2023. Um, but I have decided to go ahead and change a couple things up. And for those of you who have been watching the channel, um, you guys know that um, I switched from Fujifilm as my main kit last year. Um, but if you've been watching for a long time, you know that initially I was shooting Sony. I switched to Fujifilm in 2018. Um, shot Fuji for over four years and just kind of decided that I wanted to go back to full frame. Uh, there were some things that were pretty compelling uh, and so I went ahead and made the switch. So when I switched initially, um, I had the Sony a7 IV, um, which is my camera body of choice. Um, nice little upgrade over the a7 III, which is what I initially switched from when I had Sony before I went to Fuji. Uh, so camera's been phenomenal. Uh, really can't complain um, about the performance or anything like that. My only gripe with, and this is just Sony bodies in general, um, rewind. Back before I switched over to Sony, I had, you know, tried out a Nikon, cause I was thinking, well, maybe I'll switch to Nikon. Didn't really like it. Um, tried out a Canon R6, uh, the first one. I was like, hmm, maybe I'll switch to Canon. Um, and the Canon body, it fits in my hand like a dream. Um, it is so comfortable to hold in the hand, like, oh my goodness. Uh, sometimes like when I'm holding this for long periods of time, like my hand starts to cramp. Um, I accidentally shot an event um, last, no, a couple weeks ago, and I forgot to bring my battery grip. Oh my goodness. Um, so that's the only thing, the ergonomics of the body, I'm not a fan of when compared to Canon. Um, Sony has the sharper lines, in my opinion, they look better than the Canon bodies, um, but the Canon cameras, they feel amazing in the hand. But anyway, um, Sony a7 IV. Um, and so my staple lens and part of the reason that prompted me to switch um, is this guy here. This is the Tamron 35 to 150 f2 to 2.8 lens and this guy is literally my bread and butter lens um, events portraiture sports um, you name it i don't really do landscape or street but uh landscape yeah you could use it for for sure a nice range from that 35 to 150 not very inconspicuous for doing street photos. Um, but yeah, I mean, anything that I've thrown at this lens, oh my gosh, it's just been phenomenal. Um, and I, I wish that there was a, uh, a all in one lens like this for, you know, for Fujifilm um, or heck, even for Canon. Like, honestly, if, if Tamron made this for Canon, that might be enough for me to, to switch, but of course, Canon got the RF mount on lockdown. Um, so the a7 IV, the 35 to 150, uh, was the initial kit along with, I had the Sony 20 millimeter 1.8 lens. That lens was really good. Um, it's, it was a G lens, so it's built really nice, just like a G Master. Um, I guess just not the optical quality would be on par or like the same special coatings that you would maybe get in your G Master lens. But the lens was really good, really good if you wanna do vlogs and things like that. I don't really vlog at all, so 
not a big deal for me there. Um, I really just wanted something on the wide end of the Tamron. So I had the 35 and then I know that, or I knew that 35 was not going to be wide enough for event photography. You get a group of people, you know, five or six people, you're either going to have to step really far back or you just need a wider lens. And so I was thinking of going with a 24, but sometimes 24 isn't wide enough. And then I was doing a little bit of like interior uh, shots here and there. So I knew that 20 would be a good compromise instead of getting a 24 um, or like a 28 on the other side of that 35. So, and then I also had the 35 G Master. Um, so those are my three lenses. So I have the 20 millimeter 1.8, the 35 millimeter 1.4, and the 35 to 150. And I kind of felt that, you know, I would go on photo shoots and literally I would just take this. So I'm like, uh, why do I really have the G Master 35? Um, especially when it was still at 35 and also it was, it was one stop of light difference because this guy at 35 is at F2. And so basically I ended up selling both the 20 millimeter, well actually I take that back. Um, first I sold the 35 GM and I got the 85 millimeter Sigma lens, the ART, the DGDN. And that lens was okay. I don't know, I don't, I'm not really a big 85 fan, like even on the Fuji system, um, you know, they have the 56 millimeter 1.2, which is, a, it's, a, it's a great lens. Um, it does have some quirks out of focus. You really have to be able to nail the focus, but I just really wasn't using 85 like that. So on the Fuji, I was using um, basically a 28 millimeter, a 35 millimeter and a 135 millimeter as in terms of field of view and full frame equivalents. So I had the Sigma 85 1.4 and I just, I don't know, I just really didn't use it. Sometimes I felt it was maybe too long. Other times, maybe not long enough. It just kind of felt like in the middle. I, I really love 135 um, and that's, you know, 135. I can get 135 in this lens. So it was like, uh, I got rid of it. So, um, and my goal is with Sony, um, is to not have more than three lenses at one at any given time. I don't want more than three lenses. I only have one body. And, you know, part of the reason why I felt like I wanted to leave Fuji is I needed two bodies and five lenses to be really comfortable with having a full kit from wide to telephoto without using, you know, like, the zoom lenses um, that they offer um, because I felt like on Fuji I really wanted the the 1.4 lenses um, just because you know the smaller sensor the depth of field isn't as great um, and the low light capability isn't as great when comparing to a full frame um, body so I just felt like I needed um, that extra stop of light at 1.4 so Anyway, moving on, um, I had the 85 DGDN and the 20 millimeter. I sold both of those. So I sold the 20 millimeter to get the, um, this guy here, which is the Sigma 24 millimeter 1.4 DGDN. And um, the reason why I did that is I felt that when I was using 20, for people, it was just too wide. It was just too much going on. I didn't really need 20 all the time. Um, so I got this. And then I sold the 85 millimeter and then I got the 55 millimeter Zeiss lens. And this lens is, it's good. I mean, it does have a nice little pop to it. Um, but I don't know, I just, I don't know, I think maybe the 50, 55 millimeter focal length, um, maybe getting bored with, I don't know. 
I've always had a 50 in my kit for as long as as long as I can remember. And wow, so I'm gonna have to pause this video. I'm filming on the Fuji X-E4 and I'm in 4K 30 and I'm getting an overheating warning. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to stop filming for a quick period of time. All right, so I'm back. I turned the X-E4 off for about five minutes. So hopefully I can get through the rest of this video before that uh, warning indicator comes back on about it overheating. Um, so anyway, so the I told you I'm changing up my kit. So I just showed you the three lenses that I have. I don't want more than three lenses at a time. I have two more lenses here. Basically, I'm getting rid of both. The 24 millimeter DGDN and the 55 millimeter Zeiss. Both of these are gone. Well, they're not gone yet because I haven't found anybody to buy them. If you want to buy it, leave a comment or let me know. Anyway. So what am I replacing these lenses with for 2023? So let's get started. Um, the first lens, I'm actually excited about this lens. Actually, both of these lenses, I've actually had my eye on for quite some time. But when it came to buy a lens, I opted for different lenses. Um, and I skipped these over each lens. I actually skipped over literally I was going to buy But I was like, uh, no, I'm gonna get the 24 and the 55 um, And I should have just went with these instead So first lens here I Haven't unboxed it haven't unboxed them yet. Um, I just got them So we'll get rid of this So I'm seeing this for the first time here. Wowza. All right. So we have the Tamron 20 to 40 millimeter 2.8. And I don't know, like, I'm kind of like really digging Tamron for these odd focal lengths, you know, um, 35 to 150. And I think they used to make um, this exact lens like for another mount, it wasn't an F2 to 2.8, um, but you got the 35 to 150. Now you have the 20 to 40 on the wide end. And then they do have like their, their 150 to 500 or the newer 50 to 400. So they have like a, a nice oddball Trinity. Um, and so the reason why I got this lens to replace the 24 is when I was, shooting the event a couple weeks ago. Um, there was times I needed to take off the Tamron 35 to 150. That way I can get some group shots. But it was like I would maybe do two group shots and then turn around and I need to maybe just get, um, instead of three or four people in the photo, it might just be two people in the photo. Um, and they might be across the table. Um, so now it's like, well, I can either go into crop mode, which I don't really mind doing, um, or, you know, I need to physically move closer. Um, but if I can just zoom in and not really go into crop mode, since crop mode on the a7 IV goes from, I want to say, 33 megapixels to, I want to say 18, but it might be 16 megapixels. Um, and so really, I'm just looking for the versatility. Um, it's still 2.8, um, so it matches the 35 to 150. Um, I don't really need to blow out, you know, anybody at an event at 1.4. Um, the high ISO performance on the a7 IV, I can go up to about 10,000 is where I would feel, you know, not comfortable going above that. And so um, this lens, you know, just for that, that 20 to 40 on the wide and I could easily walk around and do, um, you know, shots with this and keep the 35 to 150 in the bag. Um, so I'm excited. I'm definitely excited for this lens. Um, so that event was the reason why I'm picking this up is because I'm like, I want the versatility over the low light. Of the 24 and i don't really use the 24 outside of events um, i don't like shooting portraits at 24 
though I have once, um, but I don't really like doing it. So it's really just for events. Now, when it comes to having something that's a little better in low light, now obviously the 35 to 150 at F2 um, for the 35 millimeter part um, and everything else is at 2.8, but I did want something else. Um, and the other lens that I neglected before was this guy here. This guy is nice. I really love the build of this lens here. I'm getting another red warning on the XE4, by the way. Um, this is the Sigma 65 millimeter F2. And I just love the way this thing is built. It feels so solid. These clicks are very nice. I got the mic down here. The clicks are very nice. Um, so it's a little bit a uh, little bit wider than 85, a little bit more narrow, obviously, than 55. And I'm thinking this might be a good middle ground. Um, since I kind of don't want 50, I don't want 85, I'm going to go in the middle. Camera shut off in the middle recording. <laughs> anyway, um, 65 millimeter F2, uh, like I was saying, not quite 85, not quite 50. It's like the Goldilocks lens is what I'm hoping. And all the reviews that I've seen of this video have been, you know, nothing but good things. Um, so I'm excited to add this to the kit. Um, so yeah, that's my kit uh, for 2023. Sony a7 IV, yep. Tamron 20 to 40, Tamron 35 to 150 and the uh, Sigma 65 F2. If you know anybody, or if you want to buy either one of these lenses, the Zeiss 55 or the Sigma 24 Art, um, the Art lens is in like new condition. Uh, just let me know. Um, the Zeiss I bought used, um, it's still in really good condition. Glass is super clean. Let me know, I'll hook you up. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna try to finish this really quick before the Fuji cut off on me again. Um, and so as far as my Fuji kit goes though, so I have the X-E4 um, and the only lens that I have for it is the 18 millimeter F2, which is my favorite uh, like walk around um, EDC lens for the system. Um, technically I do have, if you can see in the corner here, um, I do have a couple of vintage lenses for the Fuji, um, but I'm actually gonna sell those two. One of them is like a Sigma 28 millimeter and the other one's a Nikon uh, 50 millimeter 1.4. Um, I'm just, you know, I, I thought, hey, it's, you know, cool to shoot the old lenses, which it can be, but it's too slow for, for what I want. So uh, I'm gonna be selling those two. Um, the Sigma, real quick, comes with a magnetic lens cap, um, which is pretty cool. And the lens hood is all metal as well. Pretty deep lens hood. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get out of here. Um, yeah, let me know if y'all would like to see any kind of reviews on any of the Sony stuff. Um, you know, I kind of feel bad, you know, I started the channel, um, you know, I was fully in the Fujifilm. I felt like the little bit of followers I had, you know, probably started watching because I was doing Fujifilm stuff. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll try to rent like some of the newer lenses, but I don't, I don't plan on buying an X-T5, X-H2, X-H2S. Uh, the only camera I want Fujifilm to drop is an X-80 or X70S or X70 Mark II, whatever you want to call it. That's the only thing that I want really. Um, but, you know, I might try to get a hold of a couple lenses if that's what y'all would like, or if you want me to review some of the Sony stuff, you know, just let me know. But um, until next time, I'll see y'all in the next video. <laughs> Warning lights coming on again. Peace.